Hi, I'm James Ede of the Ede Foundation. Thank you for joining. Welcome to my viewers. Hi, Mom. This is, uh, the Ede Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And if you're part of a community, you're never alone. So if you want to play chess, it doesn't matter what you, language you speak, what country you're from. If you have internet access, you can join the chess community. If you don't have internet access, you can build a community at home where you are. And the Eid Foundation is dedicated to helping you build that community. Now, this show is called The Chess Files. The answers are out there. Today's question is, does chess have problems? And I always ask and invite a guest to come on. And, and uh, you may or may not have heard of this particular guest, uh, Karsten Hansen. Name doesn't really ring a bell with me, but maybe you know him better. And so we'll introduce you to him and bring him on to the show right now. Karsten. Hello Karsten there. Karsten Hansen. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining. And I, I know I'm, I'm doing you a big favor by having you on the show because uh, does anybody really? Oh, oh, my producer has just told me that you're more famous than I am in chess. How could? Okay, well, the nature of the chess file is regardless of how ridiculous uh, something might sound, you still investigate it. So <laughs> <laughs> you're a good sport, Carlos. Uh, and and so the, the, the qu can you help me answer with the question is, does chess have problems? And by problems, I'm talking about a specific type of problem. Do you know anything about chess problems? Oh, certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, at the moment, I uh, I um, post daily puzzles uh, on uh, on the internet, and uh, as well as I have a puzzle column in uh, in Chess Life magazine. So, uh, so yeah, I know a lot about problems. <laughs> wow! Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so um, you're using the word puzzle. I'm using the word problem. Is there a differentiation between them, or are they just synonyms? Oh, there, there is uh, actually a little bit of a problem uh, because uh, chess problems are typically considered uh, constructed uh, puzzles uh, that are uh, that study composers or problem composers have created, uh, whereas the ones I typically use are uh, from uh, from recent games um, played around the world, uh, either in person or uh, via the internet. So, uh, so yeah, I mean. Uh, Problems are typically uh, constructed uh, uh, positions with like made in one or made in five or sometimes made in 230 moves uh, <laughs> or, self or something like alpha, that. Alpha zero kind of problems, yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the, the longer ones have a, a tendency to have like a logical pattern to them. So it just right. takes a long time to chase the king down. Right. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's typically the uh, the difference in the uh, in the two concepts. Thank you for explaining that to me. And I'll, I'll go into my biases uh, in just a second. But I should ask um, a couple of biography type, types of questions of you. Like, wh where were you born, and where do you live now? I was born in uh, in Denmark uh, back in 1971. Uh, I moved to the United States uh, the first time around in '96. I lived in Miami for a bit. Um, uh, then had a few stopovers in uh, in London and Los Angeles before coming to the New York area, and here I've lived here basically since two thousand and three. So I uh, see. Yes. So, so, do you think of yourself as a New Yorker, or are you in Northern New Jersey, or you know, yeah, Southwestern yeah, Connecticut? Northern New Jersey. I'm not a real New Yorker, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But when, when people ask me where I live, I said, usually in the New York area. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Like, you live in like Frank Sinatra country. Exactly, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I've got you pegged. Um, yeah. How did you get started in chess? Um, well, uh, actually my mom, she taught me to play chess. Uh, she had a chess mail order store in Denmark. Oh, um, cool. uh, My dad was the uh, treasurer of the Danish Chess Federation um uh for a while uh yes and um you yeah. might be more famous than i am <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i mean my mom taught me uh i played a little bit i was not very good but uh i got some prizes typically based on uh, my age group and so on when i was playing these scholastic tournaments 
And then uh, my little brother, who is uh, three years younger than me, uh, he uh, uh, ended up winning a prize in a tournament, and I didn't win one. And that was really the, the oh. catalyst for me to start getting better. And um, during one summer vacation, I studied chess every single day uh, for hours and hours and hours. And uh, then all of a sudden, I got good. That yeah. somehow it manifested itself. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it was not anything structured. It was just sitting and playing through games from my dad's old chess magazines. Yes. And um, something stuck. Um, and then it, it happened in, in phases after that. Um, I mean, you always, if you don't work hard on chess, you tend to uh, to plateau. And I, I certainly had that a couple of times uh, where all of a sudden uh, some extra effort was uh, required for me to, to get to the next stage. Yes, that sounds very familiar to me. You know, Bobby Fischer once said that he, he was kind of plateauing and then all of a sudden he got good. Yeah. And you, you and I all of a sudden got good, but not quite as good. No, <laughs> but that's what, that's what I did. There's a manifest difference. Yes. <laughs> Bobby Fischer's progress and mine. I'm reading uh, the Donaldson uh, uh, biography. I am too. I just yeah. started it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm about 300 pages into it right now here. And uh, yes, uh, he certainly had some leaps that, uh, that I do not recognize from my own career. Right. <laughs> Right. He plays no. a game we do not recognize. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the Donaldson book, I'm, I'm really eager to dive into it. I've just begun it uh, because yeah. John is such a great author. Speaking oh, of great authors, have you written any chess books? Oh, a few. A few, yes. A few? Uh, uh, last year, my, uh, my 34th book came out. Um, 34? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Marvelous Modern Miniatures um, that was released uh, by uh, ha Hannon Russell on uh, Russell Enterprises. Yes, I know uh, Hannon. Yes, yeah, so um, it's an absolutely massive volume. It has uh, 2,020 games in it, uh, all miniatures, uh, 20 moves or fewer. Uh, and um, yeah, and uh, I selected them based on uh, opening uh, ECO code. So anything from A00, which is like uh, b3 and the move, uh, move one and knight c3 and so forth they uh, are covered all the way through to e99 which are the king's indian uh, uh, main lines and i uh, i chose the games based on them having some sort of educational value so there could be um, a, a tactical position it could be a uh, just a strong positional continuation and so on to exploit something so uh, so basically all I would say almost all of the 2020 games have an educational moment in them uh, that, that, that can benefit uh, a student on basically any level. So, I mean, most of the games are played between grandmasters and international masters. So uh, um, it was surprising to see how many good games there actually were within yeah. uh, played uh, of 20 moves of your, so. Well, your column is, is kind of new in Chess Life. Yes. And one of your would have been colleagues, Alex Dunn, um, has kind of ended his long running column on correspondence chess. And one of the things he had was miniatures. Every, every now and then he would feature correspondence games that were miniatures. Okay, yes. And, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So you were just over the board though. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, all of my games, I believe, I don't think there was any of those correspondence. I mean, I've, I've thought about making a volume on correspondence games as well, but that, uh, that will have to be some time out in the future. Yeah. Well, Hannon Russell doesn't live too far away from you, does he? He's Milford, Connecticut, if I'm exactly. not mistaken. Exactly. Uh, yeah. About an hour and a half, two hours yeah. away. Oh, so you, could guy, you guys could uh, meet up and, and, and you don't have to send them over the email the emails. You can just meet up and, and change the manuscript. And, <laughs> yeah. The old way. That would have been the old way. Yeah. Certainly. No, no. I mean, we have met several times uh, mm -hmm. in person. So, uh, but typically we communicate via email, especially these days here yeah, with the COVID. That, uh, yeah, that sure. With. So, but, uh, but yeah, now I'm looking forward to, uh, to meeting him and other chess players in the future again over yeah. the board. Just oh, <laughs> of course, yeah. Well, yeah. this shelter in place uh, got old after a month or so. It was hard to imagine that it would still be in it. And, yeah. you know, we might be in it for still a long while. And, yeah. uh, you know, so it's been a, it's been a difficult situation and, and court and correspondence chess is what I play now. And, um, 
or uh, you know, whenever I'm taking a break from over over the board, I have always played correspondence. But now online chess is taking off. Yes. Online chess is is basically the way to play chess now yes. because we can't get together in in a uh, hotel ballroom and you know play a tournament. Yes. Um, so True. this this is the way chess has evolved. Do you think that online chess is the is going to maintain its presence, or over the board is going to come back, or what do you think? I, I honestly, I think over the board is going to come back, but I think uh, online chess is definitely going to maintain its presence because it's it's proven so incredibly popular. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, through the latest boosts in, uh, in in online chess and just chess in general, with uh, with the Queen's Gambit uh, coming out, I saw you had uh, previously been yes. talking to Bruce Pandolfini about it, and yes. Um, yes. and uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, Many people that uh, that I have been friends with for a long time all of a sudden have been out to me asking for recommendations about books and so on, and I've been happily recommending your book amongst others. So oh, uh, <laughs> that's so nice of you. <laughs> I just had that handy. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I I have told many people I wish I had written that book because uh, oh, it's yes. a phenomenal book. It really is, and uh, it, it covers so many subjects. Uh, so that I, uh, I mean, if there are any beginners out there that are wondering uh, where to start in terms of uh, uh, finding a way to get from just uh, yeah, from scratch, uh, basically from uh, learning how the pieces move until like basic strategies and, uh, and winning games and so on, uh, that is definitely a great book to start with. So I'm happy to recommend. I think I recommend it three or four hundred times at least in your book. So. I, I'm so grateful. Uh, I, I expect you'll send some royalties to me at some point, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my my audio just left me. <laughs> Went on the fritz, sir. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I will buy you lunch if we ever no. get back to meeting in person. And, um, yeah, so, out of thirty-four books, though, do you have a favorite? Uh, uh, I mean, I, like, I would like, say. This is probably not my favorite. It is the most influential book that I've ever written. Yeah. Yes. But there are others that have more sentimental value to me. Yes. I mean, so it's hard I, to choose. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I have several books that I, I'm very happy with. I mean, the very first book that I wrote uh, together with Peter Heine Nelson, who is, of course, a strong grandmaster and the coach for a world champion, Magnus Carlsen, we wrote a book on the Sicilian, uh, Sicilian Accelerated Dragon. Um, and um, we re released that. One and um, and even after 20 years, it's still selling quite well because it has a lot of instructional value. Uh, the book that I have written on my own that I'm happiest with, I would say, is uh, is Improve Your Positional Chess. Um, mm -hmm. I, I learned a phenomenal amount of, about chess in general by by writing it myself because there are many ideas that that I had inside my head uh, and. Um, when I then had to put them on paper and explain the ideas oh, and my yeah. thinking and so on, um, it became a lot they clearer. Crystallized. Yeah, absolutely. They crystallized. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and I could also see it. Uh, it manifested itself in my own chess results uh, while I was writing that book, along with the book book that I wrote right after, which was um, a much more technical opening manual, which was uh, the Nimster Indian 4E3, which is. It's a complicated book, and uh, the Nimsu Indian. It's a very complicated book. I I know I have it. Yes. Yeah, and um, and uh, the problem back then was uh, that um, chess engines uh, could not handle those pawn, stru pawn structures very very well. So I was sitting with an engine that said a clear advantage for Black, uh, and Gligorich and Ivan Sokolov, their books said a clear advantage for White, and I'm like. Clearly, the engine has to be wrong if two grandmasters are saying that white is clearly better. But why is it so? So uh, rather than than relying on engines, I basically had to analyze everything and understand everything a lot better than I previously did. Because I mean, I had played the Nimsu Indian for years, and um, uh, that uh, I I could see immediate results afterwards. I mean, my uh, my rating uh, and my results were like uh, against international masters and grandmasters. All of a sudden, got better. Um, so you ha you have a FIDE master title, right? I have a FIDE master title. Yes, uh, I haven't played an awful lot. I have to say. Uh, uh, yeah, it sounds very familiar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah. uh, my professional life uh, took priority. Um, 
even over my writing for a long time. Uh, Career gets in the way. <laughs> exactly. <It's> very <laughs> much of a problem, but uh, that is yeah. uh, that's the way to do it uh, when when you are at my level, at least. Yes. So, um, yes. So yeah. So I mean. Uh, but the fact that I could uh, that I could draw uh, and and uh, contend in games against players that were rated 2500 showed me that uh, I definitely made uh, made progress. And uh, I mean that's yeah. that's why I really recommend it to anybody to to analyze their games carefully and also the openings that they analyze those carefully because if, if you understand your openings um very well then you're less surprised by a by a new move and you can navigate uh opening issues much better and and also the uh, the situation that arrives after the opening uh, you have a better understanding of it and therefore um you're in a better position to win the game even if if the structure is somewhat unfamiliar or the variation is not necessarily one that's ad advantageous for you you just have an idea of how to move forward and um uh, I mean, that, that's also how I teach uh, my students. I mean, uh, uh, you can study as much theory as you want to, but if you don't have the basic understanding of the positions and typical plans and so forth, then you're going to start floundering and then you're going to not really get the, the maximal amount out of your positions. Yes, yeah, a very good point. My first book was Remember the McCutcheon, the McCutcheon Variation of the French Defense. And yeah. all of the opening theory was that it was bad. But yeah. I understood the middle game positions that arose. Yes. And um, so I could draw with uh, I am uh, Jay Whitehead and Grandmaster Nick DeFermian, and I could draw these games because I understood what was going on. So you, this is the thing is it really, I don't think it's so critical. You should play in systems that are uh, that match your personality, your chess personality, but uh, the understanding of the resulting positions will make or break you. Yeah, individual game. Yeah, I was just uh, taking a brief look over at my bookshelf because I I have a copy of your Remember the McCutcheon. So <laughs> oh, you do. You're three of them. Oh my goodness, <laughs> all three. <laughs> Two of them are right here. <laughs> uh, I do know another person that has it. So maybe more than three. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, but um, that was basically. Uh, a compendium of my own games uh, and some grandmaster games and some illustrative games. Yeah. Um, but it was basically what I liked about it was every time the ECO would come out, there'd be no new games. Yeah. So I could just play, play my moves. Yeah. And <laughs> I was so happy with that because opening yeah. theory tends to overwhelm me. Yeah. Um, you know, if you could, besides uh, 4E3 in the Mimzo Indian, uh, for Queen C2 was it. Yeah. There was a massive amount of analysis on that oh, too. Absolutely. So, yeah. So uh, I, but I've been I, playing an info Indian for years too. So decades. No, yeah. I mean, it's the thing is, I mean, that. Uh, I mean, I, I've started writing a, a series of books now. I mean, the first one uh, came out uh, last year, in, I think in end of July, called um, uh, the Magnus uh, the Carlson Variation, which is uh, uh, what I call the opening hacker files uh, because it is. Um, the this series is going to be aimed at players that don't necessarily want to learn a massive amount of opening theory, but want to have a an out early on, <laughs> uh, and still have a, a, a the ability to uh, contend uh, in the game and sort of put a position, put themselves in a position to play for a win, preferably without knowing too much theory. And um, and uh, that's that's the idea behind that book. So, um, and, and I would try to avoid theory by playing the London system. And now, good luck with that. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. It's, it's, yeah, right. <laughs> everybody plays the London. These everybody days. knows. It. Everybody. Yeah, so no, yeah. There's there's no. You know, I even started out playing B three because I just didn't want to deal with opening theory. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Now, you're gonna have a problem with that too, because I mean, uh, yeah. Nakamura plays it a lot, and now uh, I think there's a chessable course uh, that's uh, made yeah. by uh, the Indian Super Grandmaster Adi Khan uh, uh, Baskaran. Yeah. He has just made a course on it, uh, so I mean, it's gonna also blow up. Uh, trust me. So yeah. you'll have to start looking yeah. for something different. <laughs> <laughs> you can always jump, you can always jump to the English opening. I wrote a book that's uh, I do I know. Uh, only about 500 pages on that, so uh, yeah, that, that, yeah. That be, I, I I'm familiar with that too. But if John Watson couldn't make me an English player, I don't think you can either. Oh, I, 
<laughs> no, no, he, he should have been the one to convince you. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I started playing the French because of him. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I played the French because of him also for a while, but uh, yeah. the French was not my cup of tea. It, uh, I'm um, I'm more of a Sicilian dragon kind of person. So. Um. Oh my goodness! Yes. <laughs> so you you have to know theory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I I spend a considerable amount of uh, of time on opening theory, but uh, yeah. yeah, I've always that's, enjoyed... how I, that's how I got to the McCutcheon because I, I played the Winnower first, and there was so much theory on it. I just said, "Oh, I got to find something else." <laughs> so... <laughs> no, certainly not. No, no, again, it's. Uh... Uh, it's just a matter, a matter of finding the small niches in uh, in the opening theory. I mean, you can you can play mainline openings as long as you you understand to navigate the uh, uh, the uh, the reefs and so on, uh, where yeah. you, where it it, it it the the biggest dangers they lie. So I mean, if you um, if you have some small specialty variations that you can direct people into. And then, uh, then you can easily have good results with a minor line in uh, in, a, in a main system. So, I mean, for years in the Dragon, I played something with Queen C7 very early on in the in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Yugoslav attack, right. and and beat quite strong players with it as well. So, um, uh, it's basically a rubbish variation, uh, uh, which uh, and a German IM showed me. Uh, even though he eventually lost the game, he illustrated to me exactly how bad it could go um and uh had it not been for me tricking him then uh, he would have gotten the full point quite easily <laughs> yeah yeah so um so yeah, yeah. but um well, old age and treachery is the only thing i've got going for me now <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, as far as you're writing the books and, and all of that which you're, you're a very good author and you know john watson was one of my favorite doctors yeah. um and not that he can't write now, but um, you know, when I was developing as a chess player, yeah. he was very influential. Yeah. And um, uh, but the idea uh, that I think of when I think of you, I think of the chess puzzles. Yeah. And first, you know, not that you ha don't have other accomplishments as a player <laughs> and as a writer, um, but you know, the, it's what's always amazed me is how prodigious you are, how you can produce the amount of puzzles. Yeah. Are you scanning every game with that in mind? I want to find something that looks like a puzzle. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have a process uh, that mm -hmm. I go through every week because I mean, all the games that I uh, that I publish in a particular week are from the week prior. Uh, ah, I see. So they're, they're they're brand new games uh, right. at all times. So I. I aim to have games that few or nobody knows about. Uh, right. So, um, so yeah. So uh, I typically take the download from from the Weekend Chess uh, from the website there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Weekend Chess. Yeah. yeah, it's phenomenal uh, work. That, it is uh, that Mark he uh, he does there every week. So, um, so I, I use that as my. Uh, my baseline, and then I go through the games. I typically select games uh, of um, between players that are rated uh, uh, at least 2,200. But at the moment, when there are games enough, then I typically use uh, games between players of at least 2,400 um, because um, I find that the quality of the games are better, uh, and therefore um, uh, the uh, the combinations and the, the tactical situations are of a better quality. So I, I go uh, first. I filter them uh, the shorter games out, and uh, then I just go through them uh, with an engine, uh, where I manually go through them uh, one by one. Uh, so in any given week, I easily play through a thousand games in that fashion. Uh, wow. Of course, uh, some of them I go through very fast. Some of them, if they have a big mistake early on, I I, I stop the game immediately because. Uh, Typically, they would have no relevance, um, and then I will so then go through the game. And then, as soon as I something catches my eye, um, uh, it could be that the engine says that there's something popping up, but also it could be a tactical situation that I think looks interesting. And then I'll take a clo closer look at it, and then I'll save it in a file, and then I'll go through them afterwards and uh, and 
and start figuring out which one should be posted for that particular week. So, um, but sometimes, uh, especially when uh, when the COVID crisis hit and there was not many things going on, I was going through a lot of online games and online blitz games are terrible to look at. Yes, yes, you poor guy. Yes, my, my so, sympathies. <laughs> so, no, I, I mean, well, that's I, an extraordinary amount of work that you must do, in t including a nine to five job. Yeah. So, yeah, no, my tip of the hat. Thank you. I mean, that is amazing that yeah. you would put in that much to pick out to to pick the cherries off the top. Exactly, um, and and yeah. I mean, it's uh, I I find it interesting. I mean, I I've also uh, seen from myself that uh, it actually helps my chess uh, just to have a keen tactical eye because uh, when I go through the games, I, I uh, pick out up on something and then I can see where the trend is. And then when I'm playing my own games online, uh, I think I have a, a better tactical alertness than I used to have. So, uh, but, yeah. But again, well, I mean, it does benefit yourself in some way, but the benefit to the chess community at large is immense. Thank and that's you. what I really want to congratulate you on Thank your you. contribution to the community. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be part of that. So, uh, I mean, I've been doing the puzzles now for I think two and a half years. Um, uh, daily puzzles. It used to be just two puzzles a day. Now um, uh, it's been about four puzzles for at least a year and a half now. Uh, because I, when I first started. Uh, sorting all these games i found that i had a lot of, a lot of surplus a lot of puzzles that were were good uh, for a certain level but not good enough for me to use them the way i intended um and then i created the regular ones uh, which are just the daily chess training i call them and then i have uh, chess tactics for improvers which uh, they yeah. tend to be easier puzzles right uh, so i'm posting those twice a day as well so it's four puzzles a day now uh, occasionally, I find another game that I find interesting, or that's a relevant position from something else that, that pops up. Or when I'm sitting and writing, uh, all of a sudden I find a, a fascinating position, and then I'm like posting that as well, just yeah. just for the heck of it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, uh, as as I say, you know, I, I just think everybody uh, should tip their caps to you for what the work that you're doing. And now that you're on my show, people will be more aware of it because of my viewing audience. Hi, mom. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, that what you're doing is the type of thing that um, other people could do, but nobody else is doing. So not to the not to the level that you're at. There's a lot of people, and you've also taught me another thing. I posed the question for the chess files today: as does chess have problems? And you've taught me that no. It, what I should have been asking is about puzzles because <laughs> these are two different things. Yeah. I had a friend, a good friend who's recently passed away, uh, uh, who's a grandmaster of um, uh, problem composition, okay. uh, Bob Berger. He also wrote The Chest of Bobby Fischer. So he, yeah. he was a, a real chess lover. And um, he would tell me about the themes and how this position would interest him because of this theme and, and I would look at it and it goes, it doesn't look like a chess problem. <laughs> it doesn't look like a chess game. Sorry. <laughs> so you're producing things that look like chess games. Because yeah, no, absolutely. No, I mean, that 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 is honestly where uh, uh, my love is. But uh, I, the, the, the chess composition part, uh, especially uh, studies, and that's typically in-game in studies. Uh, yes. Fascinating me tremendously, and I have oh, to. Oh yes, it can uh, be so instructive. Yeah, yeah. And, and here I have to take my cab off to to Cyrus Lockdowaller because uh, he really oh, yeah. my my eyes to it. He created a, a a Facebook group that I think is close to yeah almost twenty thousand people in his group. I think, uh, and um, and they he's posting uh, puzzles every day. I mean, or, or studies every day, and the uh, the members in that group uh, they range from almost beginners up to like super grandmasters yes, yeah, and, yeah. and grandmasters and international masters of composition are part of it too and they post their uh, their compositions as well and it, it's just fascinating honestly uh i am not very good with the problems i have to say that those uh those mating uh puzzles yeah. Yeah. Uh, they uh i have difficult time wrapping my brain around those. Yeah, uh, too, I get easily annoyed by them. So, 
<laughs> but also to the clap to Cyrus, yeah. a wonderful, wonderful yeah. contributor to our chess community. Yeah. And and yeah. and his book uh, Rewire Your Chess Brain, I think, is a phenomenal contribution as well. One of my favorite books of last year. So um, I uh, I ha wholeheartedly recommend that to anybody. It's uh, it's a different take on 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 uh, chess composition as well because most. Uh, books on chess composition has a tendency, or they have a tendency to uh, to just show the puzzles and then a solution. But here, in this one here, uh, Cyrus also gives you an, a, a look into how he tries to solve these puzzles, which is quite educational because uh, most of us start from scratch in that uh, department because honestly, we have very little yeah. experience with it. I mean, um, yeah. I've been exposed to it a few times over the years but never consistently. And now I see it every day and I look at them every day, which definitely is something that has helped me also in my, my own games online. Yeah. Okay, you convinced me. I'll give it another shot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm happy to hear that. No, I, I mean... Yeah. Uh, and then Cyrus will come on and I'll have the question is, is does chess have puzzles? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just have to get something wrong right off the bat. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank I know you, that man. you have to go to work, and yeah. uh, um, but your contributions, I again, tip my hat to you for what you do for the chess community. I wish you all the best and all the success that you wish to have. And um, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. I, uh, really? I definitely will. Thank you. And, okay. Uh, Yes, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, thank you again. And uh, I'm going to take you backstage so that I can do my uh, egocentric goodbyes. Okay. Right. <laughs> thank you, so Carson. All right. This has been another edition of The Chess Files. The answers are out there. And The Chess Files is going to be brought to you 1 p.m. Eastern Time every Friday. Every Friday that I can do it. And so I want you, my faithful viewers, my mom, and to, to retend and ask me questions. You can send it to e edfoundation at gmail.com. Uh, and it, there's a, my chess website is edfoundation.org. Uh, so just get in contact. Tell me who you want to hear. Tell me what the, the guests you want to see on the show, and I'll do my best to find them. So until then, until I see you again, I want to uh, wish you all the best and a happy 2021.